So I've kind of been seeing a lot of people lose their mind about this, this thing you see on the screen. Collector card CT scanning services or cat scanning services if you're from Texas like me and that's what you refer to it as. Guys, this stuff is wild because I don't think it necessarily affects the market for like your small end collectibles. Like I don't think anybody's gonna be paying these prices for Twilight Masquerade boxes. And when I get to the prices, I'll discuss why. But this definitely has implications for like higher end stuff. And it makes it very nerve wracking, especially for collectors who are not really involved in the high end collectible market to be wary of buying anything that could potentially have been subject to this. This is a thing that I am completely surprised it even exists. Like, who would think of the idea of CT scanning Pokemon cards, right? Who would think of this? Like, I don't think anybody in their right mind would have thought this was possible or even thought of this idea, but it ended up happening anyways. So let's scroll through the site and look at some things real quick and talk about this. So it says it's quick, affordable, and reliable. The affordable option, I don't think it's necessarily affordable and we'll see why, but it is to identify holographic cards inside of unopened Pokemon packs. That is literally their first line of text in their description. If you haven't heard, we have been able to identify holographic cards inside of Pokemon packs. That is what they're going with and that is where they're building off of. When this information was revealed and YouTubers such as Rattle and uh, Opossum Bud and OK Jave Love all covered this, at, the, at that time a lot of people were like, maybe this really won't affect much because it's gotta be expensive, nobody's gonna be able to buy these machines. But I don't think anybody ever thought, hey, there's gonna be a company that's gonna try to do their own little like PSA service for this. But that's what this is. It's basically a service that you can pay, send your packs in and they will scan them for you. And they said it's because of the explosion of interest that they received. Um, it is very interesting to see how many people genuinely take this. Nobody's ever gonna admit that they've done this. Nobody is gonna admit, cause here's what's gonna happen, right? Here's what's gonna happen. If you send your pack in and you pay this price, but it's not a card you're looking for, that means that is a pack that's not worth opening. And I'm specifically referring to like vintage sports, vintage Pokemon, like stuff that's expensive, right? You buy a $600 pack and you're looking for that chase card. And you know you bought it, you bought it heavy. It's a $600 heavy pack. You send it in, you pay the money. Let's say it ended up being a hollow rare wiggly tough worth 20 bucks. Now you got a pack you could put back on market, mark it as heavy because it is gonna be a guaranteed hollow. But now you know there's no chance of pulling, let's say Charizard or Blastoise or Venusaur or anything that's actually worth value in there. So now you're gonna have heavy packs on the market that are gonna end up being really bad cards because people are gonna be chasing those. Imagine all the base set packs that are probably gonna be sitting in here, especially the first edition ones, looking for the three base starters or looking for one of the higher end cards and completely putting the packs back on market that has something that's not worth pulling. It has one of those lower end hollows. Imagine how many of the uh, Neo packs are gonna be sent in to try to find Lugia, but if it ends up being something that's not worth pulling, going to be put back on market and resold as a heavy pack. But imagine how many of these packs are going to be pretty much, I'm not going to say tampered with because that's not the right word, but they're technically tampered with because now the person that was buying it to try to get the good card out of it knows what's in it. And if he knows there's not a good card, it's going back on market. There is nobody out there in this world that is trying to see what's inside a pack and then keeping that pack if it's a bad card they're gonna reinvest in that pack and sell it and then turn around and use that money to buy another pack that is just the truth when it comes to that and i know there's going to be people in this hobby that disagree with that but that is the truth all of these high-end collectibles as long as this service is good as long as people trust this service and start doing it all of your high-end like collectors all of your people that delve into your um vintage market 
they will be sending in heavy packs all throughout the era and getting all the good cards off the market and all the heavy packs over time will delve into being the bad hollow cards and the bad cards from the sets and all the good cards will be found through technology like this. Now, that is something where it's gonna require a lot of people in the vintage market, a lot of your really, really high-end, high-dollar collectors taking action on this. And why do I say that? Because the pack scanning prices are insane. If you send one to five packs, they're charging $75 a pack. That is $75 a pack. That is $375 for the five packs. Plus, we'll look at some of the stuff that's required but you will have to give them a shipping label to send your stuff back. They don't even cover shipping back to you with this price. So this is just $75 to scan each pack. $70 for six to 10 packs. So for 10 packs, that's $700 to scan all 10 packs. 11 plus packs is $65 a pack. So at the bare minimum, we are at 700 plus dollars for the pack scanning tier here. And then they have boss scanning and they're they say based on it to be determined per box. I'm assuming depending on what box it is and how many packs are in the box, that is what's going to be determining factor for the pricing. But I'm going to assume it's probably going to be $700 plus to scan a box. So imagine if... I'm not 100% sure how the seating works. Like, I don't know. I know I've seen people mention this. I don't know if this box scanning allows you to see exactly which pack has which card or not, but if it's capable of doing that, that means that you're gonna have people that send in stuff like base set booster boxes, first edition jungle boxes, Sky Ridge boxes, those sort of things. Probably pay that fee, but to find all the chase cards out of those boxes, take all those packs out, take those cards out, maybe grade them, maybe do something else with them. And now you can put all those other Lucy's on the market and sell them, knowing that they're all light, knowing that none of them have any hits in them. All the Lucy's go on market. So I think if this can actually be that accurate, this is a terrible fucking option because that means vintage boxes can absolutely be sent in and you can find all the hollows to grade out of every pack. And you'll know exactly where they are in that box, which is not ideal for the market at all. Now for the pack scanning for $65 a pack, the 11 plus packs, like I said, if you're a high-end collector and you could spend this money and you're sending your packs, there you go. This is 100% never going to be something that people are going to do for modern cards. Because think about it. Let's say even if you were hunting Greninja, right? Even if you were hunting Greninja from Twilight Masquerade, paying $65 a pack is insane money for a card that'll cost less than what you would pay in fees to scan those packs. So we won't see this hit the modern unless they do like a $10 per pack tier or anything like that. Unless they're doing that kind of like pricing, this will mostly be high end collectibles, vintage packs, that sort of thing. That's what these prices will affect. Those packs that already cost hundreds of dollars to buy that have cards that if you pull the right cards can be worth thousands of dollars at PSA 10. That's what this is affecting. So my modern collectors out there, my people who collect the newest stuff, this does not affect you, at least not yet. Now there is the potential it can in the future. I'm never going to deny that opportunity or the chance of this company doing that. But for now, this is strictly like vintage and high-end parts of the Pokemon market and most likely the sports market and other markets as well. Now, they said that the, they're working for techniques on booster kits and boxes, exceptionally difficult. Capturing the data is easy, but the evaluation is not. And it basically gives like a lot of things of like why booster box scanning is a little bit more difficult than individual packs. And then if you scroll down, it kind of shows you how it would be. You see the scan here is showing the outline of Venusaur and the outline of Charizard here, which gives you the inclination that they're in these packs. And these were apparently scanned from booster packs, base set booster packs and celebration booster packs. And then you go down here. It's even showing you a one, uh, not 151, a Twilight Masquerade Zapdos was found in a large stack of cards. And it was found at this spot right here which I'm assuming this is scanned out of a booster box. So it's telling you that Zapdos was right here in this pack. So you can count how many are here. You got three, six, nine, 12, 
13. So pack number 13 would have been the Zapdos. And then 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There's 18 packs in total. So if you were to send in your booster box and they, let's say they gave, uh, let's say this is what they did. $100 per booster box to scan. Once they get the scanning technology down, I could see that totally affecting the modern market. People sending in their booster boxes, finding out where all their pools are, pulling all the hits out, all the hit packs and reselling all the Lucy's. Sell them as individual packs with no hits in them. I could 100% see that happening, but you see here, we got a Gar, uh, Garboder VMAX was found, and this was also in a stack of packs, it looks like, but these stack of packs, it's just a stack of packs. It's not a booster box, it looks like, and they were able to find the Garboder VMAX, and they show that it's also possible with sports cards, where they found sports cards in here as well. And One Piece was also searched. They had a One Piece box that found your NL uh, alternate art hit in one of the packs. And it shows you here that it was five packs in and it's right here. So it shows you where all these are. And it says that they can also do it for Magic the Gathering. So one, once again, if they ever do something like they do and they say, that's $100 to scan your booster box and they got the booster box technology down, I can 100% see this affecting markets such as One Piece, uh, affecting Y Schwartz, affecting Magic the Gathering, affecting Pokemon and even Yu-Gi-Oh. I can see these markets being affected drastically if that happened. But I don't know how this is. And one of the reasons why I worry about that is right here. Valuable cards are not guaranteed and we cannot guarantee our scan will reveal any useful, uh, useful or interpretable information. So in other words, they cannot guarantee that their scan will find your pools. And I can understand this because they also mentioned here that in one of these, they say that they don't know uh, right here. There are many products we have not scanned. Best effort will be used on the unfamiliar products. So that means as of right now, their facts and conditions list is you may send in something that they can't scan. So I think this is going to be a trial era for a lot of the people who will are willing to pay the fees to use this. But I think that down the line, this could really hurt the hobby. That's just what I'm thinking. Now, it could it could absolutely be a flop and we could never see this uh, again in like a year and it could completely fade into dust. But I think if you have a lot of serious collectors that are in this hobby for profit and they got big money they're willing to spend, I could definitely see that happening. Because for example, they're showing where they found Hypno, for example, here. So I can see this 100% affecting the market in a lot of negative ways, especially if they're able to make it more affordable for people to benefit from modern products, products that are not as expensive, such as One Piece booster boxes, Pokemon booster boxes, Yu-Gi-Oh booster boxes. Uh, so I can see that 100% hurting. Some other terms and conditions are a little bit bad. Um, the return label, we do not uh, cover return shipping costs with the prices they're offering. I feel like that's kind of like shitty. Like the amount it costs to return shipping, I guess, I guess the reason why they do this is because they return shipping label. They don't have to offer insurance, I guess. I guess the insurance would be based on the person shipping and receiving the products. So that could be the case. They also say pre, uh, provide tamper-proof packaging on all of our uh, on all the products, just in case. I, er, anytime you do anything with like a high-end product, always try to provide tamper-proof packaging. All products are placed in a uh, uh, into plastic sleeves, and they prefer their products to be uh, people to product uh, to serialize their products. But they will put a number sticker on each of the plastic sleeves to correlate with the product in their database. They will store the data for up to 30 days and they photograph everything upon receipt. So that way, if there's any damage uh, post, they're responsible, but any damage before, um, whether it's done through shipping or whether it was as it arrived, they're not liable for. So that way somebody can't send in a booster pack and then it'd be like bent in half and then they claim that this company did it. Uh, that's just something that should always happen. I know PSA started doing that with their cards. They start scanning in cards before uh, as they arrive. So that way somebody can't say, hey, you damaged my corner if there was a visibly damaged corner in the scans originally. Shipping will be uh, shipping tracking will be provided upon request. Uh, they do say that uh, anybody with really high value products can bring or high dollar products can bring it to them. You can visit their lab. And I think that's pretty much everything else. Um, and it, all credit card orders have a 4% processing fee. That's just standard. But everything else, 
is pretty much your standard run of the mill type of information. I think the one big red flag is, hey, we might not be able to find anything in your box. So I think this is going to be a trial and error for a lot uh, for a lot of people. But they do have a lot of information of stuff they were CAT scanning or CT scanning. And they show you all the information on all their case studies in the previous months. But you see here that on June 26th, they started doing unopened Pokemon cards. And then they started doing, in July, um, trading cards or sports trading cards. And that's where kind of like the red flags come in for the hobby. Guys, if you are somebody who's interested in buying vintage, now that this service is available, please buy from people you trust. Please buy from somebody you know for a fact would never venture into this type of stuff. If you see somebody with tons and tons of like vintage graded tins all of a sudden, and they're also selling sealed packs, there may be a red flag that maybe they are considering the service or have been using the service. So just be mindful of that going forward when buying high-end products. And if the service ever offers a cheaper tier for like sealed booster boxes, then definitely 100% start uh, buying your other products and being very, very cautious when buying those. And that includes modern products, but that's when this becomes more affordable. If this can never be affordable for modern, modern will never be affected by this, but I will always say that that is a chance. With that being said, guys, that's it for today's video. I just kind of wanted to cover this because I think this is fascinating and wild and terrifying all at the same time because once again if this ever becomes affordable for your modern market uh it will completely change the way people buy sealed in the trading card hobbies especially when there's high-end chase cards to be found such as serialized cards such as manga arts such as alternate arts whenever those things exist and they're high dollars it may become more and more cautious when buying stuff on the open market so that's kind of my concern with this i don't know if the, everything will shape out the way i'm seeing it but the way i'm seeing it is if this company ever makes it affordable it is going to devastate the trading card market in terms of sealed product but with that being said let me know down in the comment section below what you think about this do you think this is a good service a bad service how do you think this is going to affect the trading card market and i'm not just talking pokemon i'm talking one piece sports Yu Gi Oh, magic the gathering why Schwartz, Dragon Ball Super, any of those card games. How do you think this will affect those markets? Will this have an effect on those markets? Will it only have an effect on the vintage markets? I'd love to know your opinions down below. And as always, guys, I want y'all to stay awesome. Peace.